Okay, in this video we're going to discuss the possibility of an infinite, discrete, uniform distribution. Infinite, discrete, uniform distribution. So a lot of times when someone is trying to ch um, choose between two possibilities, or they're trying to choose someone, or people are trying to be ranked, however, whatever the situation may be, they're asked to choose a number between 1 and 10, and then the, the, the one person has a number in mind, and the other person tries to guess it, and um, the person that guesses the closest gets whatever they want to get. I don't know what the situation would be. But what would happen if you didn't say choose a number between 1 and 10, but you instead said pick or choose a positive integer at random? This would imply that we want our outcome to be a uniformly distributed random variable where the outcome is uniform on the set of positive integers, the set containing 1, 2, etc. And that would be the case if random were to mean um, each number is equally likely. Well, it turns out this is impossible. If somebody chooses a random positive integer, there is absolutely no way to do it so that each num each integer is equally likely. Instead, if I were to say pick some positive integer up to someone, they'd probably give me an, an integer on the order of a million or less. Um, if they were a smart aleck, maybe they'd give me a trillion or less, or 999 trillion. But the chance that they would give me an integer with, uh, say, 100 digits is extremely low and certainly less likely that they would give me the integer of 52. Okay, so if I were to just ask somebody to generate a positive integer, the result definitely wouldn't be random. Not every number would be equally likely. But it turns out not only is this something people can't do, it's something that cannot be done, period. Why is this impossible? Well, what we're going to do here is we're going to do a, use a technique called proof by contradiction. We're going to assume that it is possible but then we're going to end up at a logical consequence that just doesn't make sense. So, I'm going to have a random variable x, and suppose x has possible values. Um, I don't want to do zero. Just one, two, three, four, etc. All the positive integers. such that each number is equally likely. What does it mean to be equally likely? Well, it means the probability of getting that number is the same. So there's some P. I'm going to write a script P so you don't get confused with the capital P. That's the probability that the random variable is equal to 1. That's the probability that the random variable is equal to 2, etc. Okay, so that every number has probability p of being chosen. Well, there's two cases here. And what we want to remember is that the way of assigning probabilities needs to have two qualities. First of all, all the probabilities have to be non-negative. And second of all, the probability, total probability has to be 1. All the probabilities sum to 1. So let's suppose p were 0. If it's non-negative, it's either 0 or it's positive. Well, if p is 0, then the sum of the probabilities is the sum from i equals, I should use k to be consistent with what I've been doing in uh, this course up to this point the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of the probability x equals k. Well, that's the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of 0. And if I pull up Wolfram Alpha, okay, 
and I want to sum zero from k because I know this this seems weird. We're summing up a bunch of zeros, so of course it's going to be zero. But I'm going to check because we're summing up an infinite number of zeros. Maybe somehow that changes things. No, it doesn't. Summing zero uh, an infinite number of times gives you zero. Okay, so the total probability here is zero. That's no no. In other words, the contradiction. Okay, so I can't have that the probability of getting one of these numbers is zero. And you might see where this is going. So it must be that the probability is positive. Well, then that implies that the sum of the probabilities sum from k equals 1 to infinity of p, it diverges. Okay. This sum ends up being infinite. And I'm not sure if Wolfram Alpha will tell us that or not, but we'll go see. Let's say I sum p from k equals 1 to infinity. Sum does not converge. Sum does not converge. Okay, so that means it diverges. In either case, it's certainly not 1. Okay, so we see that, going back to the blackboard screen here, if this p-value, the probability of getting, um, getting 1 for the random variable is 0, then I've got a problem because the total probability is 0. Total probability is supposed to be 1. If the p-value is positive, then I also has, have a problem because the total probability is, again, not 1. It diverges to infinity. So the net result here is that it is simply impossible to have a uniform distribution on a countably infinite set. Now, in a later section, we'll learn that it isn't true that it's impossible to have an uniform distribution on an infinite set. There is a way to get a uniform distribution on an infinite set. It just can't be a countable an infinite set. It has to be an uncountable set. And I know that some of you um, might not remember what countable means, and that's not a big deal right now. We'll see what happens when we go to the continuous random variables. But for now, just remember that an infinite, discrete, uniform distribution is not possible. We can't do it.